So here comes the part of the day that you guys get to help us out. Um, so we, first let me promise you that lunch is coming very shortly after this activity. Um, but let me ask you um, to look at the topics that are listed in your agenda. Um, topic one is barriers in academic institutions. Two is workforce diversity. Three is strategies for engaging community partners. Four, integrating genetics research into health disparities. And five, interprofessional teams in health disparities. What we would like you to do is to stay right here in this room, um, but to go to the different groups and to discuss barriers and opportunities for each of these topics. At this time, you can break rules. You're going to break through the barriers that we have on the sides of the room. And I'm going to assign people as to where they might sit um, just to talk about this. Um, there should be in each group a person who will report out. And I'm being given these sheets of, of paper, actually these folders that identify. OK, first, interprofessional teams and health disparities. So I'd like you to go over here to the, the back of the room on my left, your right. And we're going to place this on one of the chairs. So if you're interested in that topic, please follow this person. And let's talk about uh, the barriers and opportunities in that area. Barriers in academic institutions. I'd like you to sit about maybe toward the front on this side, OK? Strategies for engaging uh, community partners. If you'd like to sit all the way in the back on the right, so that would be on this side of the area. Workforce div diverse, OK, I see no one moving. Tell me what's going on. I have to get feedback. OK, we are trying to get groups of people to talk about these specific topics and to give us the barriers and the opportunities in these specific areas. So before I have people move, tell me what you're feeling. Because as a psychologist, I know something's going on. So tell me. And you can be honest, because we can change on, on a dime. Yes, sir. Yes, doctor. Oh, you want me to go through the whole list? OK. <laughs> OK. Workforce diversity was where Carla is standing. OK. Oh, right? Here's workforce diversity. I'll bring it. Yes, but if she move, if we go back a little further, we can do workforce diversity. OK. We have integrating genetics research into health disparities. I've, ah, Dr. Petsu, you will go wherever you choose. <laughs> OK, In, uh, this is two of the same thing. Strategies for engaging community partners. We have already, right? I think that, that Lakia did two of each. So I think we're done. We're going to do a little deviation in the program. And we have one of Dr. Butenforster's students who is going to give us a little feedback. Then we will have feedback from the groups. So talk about dedication. Um, I'd like to introduce to you Ms. Abira Khalid, who is one of our Sprinter students, who wasn't able to make it earlier because she had class. She's one of our students from Medgar Evers, Drs. Blackman and DeBoers. This is one of your students. Um, hello, good afternoon. My name is Abira Khalid, and I'm from Matt Gerber's College. Um, and it's not far, so I was able to make it here. Um, <laughs> um, my story is that I come from Pakistan, and when I came here, it was really hard for me. All those English language, learning those barriers. I was in high school, 11th grade, and it was really hard making to college and all. So when I 
come to this country and in my country we don't have this this SATs and whatever we just have this grade and I come here and I'm like what is SAT and I somehow make it to college and now I'm in college and the medical um, I want to be a doctor so becoming a doctor I don't know the process here and I was really confused as I was in high school when I met my advisor, pre-med advisor, Dr. Charles Zibose, and I went to him and then he's like, oh, okay, you're lost, I see, so I'll explain this to you. This is MCAT and all that. And then I'm still lost, but then he's like, hey, Abira, do you want to come to this amazing summer program by the SUNY Downstate? I'm like, wait, I cannot go to SUNY Downstate because it's gonna be in other, you know, in states, but it wasn't really far. It was really close to my college, so luckily I was able to make it. I came here and I met these amazing people. Not only the um, office of diversity and you know, but also my peer. I saw they were amazing. One, we um, we were assigned to mentors. Um, and it was great because only two or three people were um, um, advised to like one mentor. And then um, we worked on this um, different projects. For me and my two peers, um, the project we were assigned to was how we to have low sodium diet into um, um, dialysis patients. So we we were looking at how we can uh, make. Um, dialysis patients take low sodium diet right and we went to see those dialysis patients and the struggle they were going through now we had the surveys um which was given to us by um our mentor um and um those surveys we coded them and uh, and then we made them into three basic themes we saw that patients uh, were facing miscommunication between um, um, health professional and um, patients and how um, they were not enough family support. And we want to do something about that. So we, we kind of like coded them and, and made them into teams so we can come up with how is this happening so we can further do research in on this. Um, yeah, that's, that's my story and now we were really, um, when I ca came to America and to the college, even then, I was really lost. So when I come, came to this program, I not only did research, but also interacted with all these amazing people, went to um, a lot of places, and I met a lot of um, people that made me realize that not medicine isn't the only field I can go into, like, you know, being doctor. It opened more professional fields to me. It made me aware of all those um, people I could refer to if I'm in, um, you know, really need. So, and yes, that's, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to ask that the persons who are reporting out, um, I. I think you can be heard from your chair. Um, so if we can just, I'm going to go through the names and whoever is the reporter for that group, please just stand and give us some information about what your group came up with. And of course, you'll leave with us a written document so that we can use this as we develop the programming for transport. Okay, okay. Um, our leader has asked that you come and share with us at the mic. So I'm looking at Dr. Blackman, <laughs> who doesn't want to move, but I'm going to let him move. Okay, what group are you with, Dr. Blackman? Okay. Please come and join us. Uh, good morning, colleagues. Uh, our group, I'm, I'm Terrence Blackman, uh, our group worked on uh, bar institutional barriers, so the group broadly consisted of myself, uh, Uche Wokoma, uh, Dr. Tena, Eduardo Mascareno, Nikki Jones from Brooklyn College, uh, Chris Roman, faculty here at Downstate, 
uh, Florian Joseph, uh, SUNY Downstate, and uh, Dr. Tanya Taylor from the College of Medicine. Uh, we, we started off at the institutional barriers and we, we decided that since we were Medgarvers, Brooklyn, and, and SUNY Downstate, that we would start with Brooklyn College because there was only one person in our group from Brooklyn College. And uh, so, so Nikki Jones started us off with uh, thinking about addressing some of the barriers. And, and one of the things that she noted was that uh, the, the question of sort of getting students access immediately, getting students access to labs, uh, getting students access to response, uh, to, to research opportunities, and, 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 and really kind of in, in areas like uh, biochemistry and organic chemistry, uh, having our faculty kind of do things from a pedagogical standpoint that was much that was more supportive of 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 the students who were already there, and you know, so I asked her to talk some about opportunities. And one of the things she noted, or potential opportunities that she saw, uh, one of the things that she noted, and I think this is important because it's also echoed in my experience at Medgar Evers College, was that we needed to pay much more attention to the sort of high school to college transition in order to support research. So. So many of our students come in with the fixed expectations that were that were outlined in the in the in the in the presentations. You're going to be a doctor, or a lawyer, or something else, or otherwise you're useless. And so research is a very hard sell in that context. And 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 so from this perspective, it seemed that uh, what was important for us to do was to think about that transition from high school to college as a way of sort of setting kind of expectations around not just being a doctor, but being something else beyond that. The other, the other point, which I think was very important, she noted, and this is something that is also echoed in, in our experience at Medgar Evers College, our students often come in wanting to solve some problem related to their community. They have a very strong sense of serving community. And, and so the, the, the challenge for, the opportunity that is there for us is to be able to connect the research component of, 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 of what we're doing to this service component that students really come to us with a really strong desire uh, to affect some, some service to community. And in addition, so she noted that there was an opportunity here for, for sort of educating faculty uh, to some of the challenges that, that, that students face in terms of, you know, how they, how they, how they, how, what, what has been mentioned in terms of how they, they, they they, they kind of engage the academic space and engage the research space, so sort of thinking about networking, which arose in, in, in the subsequent part of our conversation. So our next speaker was sort of Uche Wakoma, and he is a, a, a physician from Nigeria who's in the MPH program, and he started to talk, he's here at Downstate, and started to talk about some of the barriers, and this led to, I think, the discussion that we had. Which is, so you shared an experience of sending emails to faculty kind of asking about research projects. And sort of, he said, I noted I sent it from my downstate address, but then the response for the email was, was not as high as he had anticipated. And, and, and then finally, faculty member reached out and, and kind of created a project for him to work on. And, and this really kind of pushed the group in the direction. So what was clearly evident and perhaps an opportunity for us was that even when students wanted to do research, there was no immediate place for students to connect with faculty who were doing research problems. I mean, you know, there were questions of sort of bandwidth of the faculty, uh, the questions of credit that faculty would receive for mentoring, uh, questions of institution expectations around, around mentoring. And so essentially what we currently have is a, is, is a, is a network for mentoring that is, that is sort of informal. It sort of relies very much on the individual faculty members uh, uh, so Dr. Taylor sort of noted that this was something that resonated with her experience and uh, she really affirmed this need for a space and a place where these logistics could be worked out and you know she noted in her experience also a number of students reaching out and the lack of the ability to keep up with the number of students who, 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 who wanted to have a research experience but simply didn't have a structure within which that research experience could. Uh, so again, she, she too affirmed the need for, for, for some kind of credit for mentoring and, 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 and also sort of 
noting this balance that needs to be in order to have research experiences for students, uh, she needs to write grants in order to have research projects going in her office. And so there's a need for some kind of balance structure supporting her, her efforts around grant writing. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll end now uh, just to, because this really dovetailed very nicely. Uh, Eduardo <laughs> noted that for four years, uh, he and colleagues have been running a kind of informal summer program uh, which, which brings students in to talk about some of the issues that we've described, hypertension, etc. But essentially it's something that broadly is not formal and it, it lacks a particular kind of structure. And he expressed sort of real challenge of coming, of finding undergraduates who, who would be interested in participating in that. And, and, and we ended really nicely because Tina noted that, you know, a number of, uh, their problem was exactly the opposite. Their problem was that they had a number of programs and they struggled to find mentors who would participate in that program. So I think, you know, broadly there are some gaps and there are some opportunities. There, this, this, you know, mentors, students, and a network that connects mentors, students in some formal way so that it's not just done at the level of a nice professor, but it's done at the level of the institution. So sort of broadly what, what, what our group where our group ended. We, we didn't really have a chance to talk much about workforce diversity, but I, my apologies for that. I was a bit slow as the, as the guy. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm Larry Schell. I'm from Albany. And I have to say that it's been a real pleasure to be here. Very um, encouraging and very informative, and I'm really glad I, I made the trip. So the uh, a team that I was part of is the Interprofessional Teams in Health Disparities. And what we started out with was focusing not so much on names, but on different disciplines and backgrounds. And so we had in our group um, uh, clinical psychiatry, social psychology, um, cardiovascular disease research, um, OBGYN and endocrinology um, specialties, anthropology, nursing, uh, nursing research, nursing service. So we felt we had a fairly diverse group of, of backgrounds, intellectual or research backgrounds in the group, so we could talk about interprofessional uh, teams. Uh, we, I, I have here more, more sound bites than I have text, the way my predecessor delivered such a beautiful uh, description of what, what we had, they had learned. So in the resources category, because we divided things up into resources and opportunities, so in the opportunities category, uh, rather, we, we saw resources as a, as a the, the number one uh, opportunity, the diversity of content uh, of research areas at the, uh, the medical center, and where we are, physically where we are, that is the, in, in Brooklyn itself as an opportunity, uh, learning from each other, was an opportunity also gained by inter, uh, interprofessional teams. Um, we have diverse faculty and researchers, and they are diverse uh, not only intellectually, but also in their backgrounds and ancestries, and therefore their experiences on Earth, which is a, a huge opportunity. Um, it was also described uh, that we have an opportunity through our interprofessional team to respond to patients in a more holistic fashion. Um, another opportunity is technology uh, that, that allows us to, to link arms. Um, and there are grants on campus which were identified as being uh, opportunities for getting people together, for combining research expertise, uh, and, and for encouraging interdisciplinary research. Um, Another opportunity was the engagement of community and the leaders in the community and showcasing uh, our accomplishments to legislative leaders because that's very important. Um, we can also promote evidence-based medicine. That was brought up as an opportunity. And uh, finally, uh, funding. That is to say that um, with an interdisciplinary team, interprofessional team, we have opportunities for funding which might not be available uh, with a more narrow focus and even uh, funding opportunities which are fairly narrow still are now seeking interprofessional teams to lead the work. The, the challenge list, I'm glad to say, is a little shorter. Um, 
One of them is the need to focus on a target. It's very easy to be kind of a little scattered with an interprofessional team. Communication, literally communication that is talking to each other and the vocabulary and concepts which the team uh, members are using can be different and it takes a while to introduce these concepts and to uh, achieve a certain kind of intellectual harmony um, in the communication. And then there's a very basic thing, it's called scheduling. People are very busy, there are different, different kinds of schedules involved. I know that some groups are meeting uh, by telephone at five o'clock in the evening, for instance, uh, because it's impossible to get everybody in the same room at the same time in regular working hours. Um, a challenge, again, is knowledge of others' areas of work. Uh, most of us have been trained in, in a fairly narrow area, and it takes, uh, it takes some some uplearning to get used to other people's uh, backgrounds and expertises. We have underutilized technology and there are certain challenges to getting it utilized. That is, we all need, we need training, we need people to show us the way with some of these uh, technologies that facilitate communication. Um, we also have a, a, a culture on campus that does not, and it's not just this campus, I think it's on, on my campus also and probably on many others, that does not really emphasize interprofessional teams, but uh, a more narrow focus um, in, in, in order to achieve professional goals. Um, finally, not finally, I should say, it, it takes money to, uh, uh, to accomplish a lot of these things, and that's a challenge. We need uh, additional funds for support services, and the results of uh, that support may not be seen in the timeline that most administrators and, and, and researchers uh, have to uh, follow for their reporting. So many of these investments are made now, but the fruits are to be found, to, to be reaped, harvested in, uh, in a number of years, long after the, uh, the report of where did that money go and what was it used for was due. So thank you very much. Okay, so I'm Jackie Myers from Psychiatry. So our group actually spent most of the time introducing each other and discussing our research and our uh, interest in integrating genomics into health disparities research. Um, so we had representation from many different backgrounds, psychiatry, um, we luckily had uh, two ECRIP fellows as well, dermatology, ophthalmology, public health, and I'm sure I'm, I'm leaving out some others. Um, and I think what came up uh, in our group was that in many different areas of medicine, um, there are major health disparities that are seen in our uh, population here at Downstate. And in the area of genomics, um, there's very little research done uh, on any of these populations. So in terms of opportunities for research, um, it's sort of a world of opportunity. Uh, I think that um, us getting together to um, put together interdisciplinary teams to tackle, um, we would have uh, wonderful um, research ideas ahead. Uh, some of the challenges and barriers that we discussed um, involved uh, engaging the community in this research, uh, education and the importance of educating the community, um, and uh, I think other researchers and how to um, do this, this genomics research responsibly was another uh, issue that came up. Um, so hopefully that wraps it up. Somehow or another, I became the leader of this group simply because I thought the group was behind me and they were paying no attention to me, and the group was in front of me, and I was paying no attention to them. <laughs> <laughs> they finally discovered who I was and that I was already writing, so if you're already writing, go ahead, write, all right? Um, our group was made up of um, someone uh, who's Italian-American uh, and um, um, claims to be part of the, uh, the program uh, uh, preparation to begin with. So that's his uh, claim to fame, but he's part of the faculty of, or the operation in the medical school. The other, I, I am an alumnus, class of 66, and I came back 
like Aerosmith. If you read Aerosmith, you know uh, um, the newspaper man in the Middle West who wrote Aerosmith described Aerosmith as the grandson of a doctor who became a doctor by sitting with a doctor. In those days, in the Middle West, no medical schools, you sat with a doctor, go take the license, examine your doctor. That's how Jefferson became a, a lawyer, even though he never practiced, all right? Um, and um, his, his father, on the other hand, was forced to go to medical school when a medical school appeared in the Middle West. So he wound up halfway doing both. But Aerosmith went to medical school, all right? And became a physician from the medical school. So uh, I'm trying to remember the, the author. He was a newspaper man. Uh, at any rate, he was a Middle Westerner, and he described Aerosmith's time in practice, all right? young man, probably in the 30s and the 40s of, of America, and uh, of the USA, and um, he um, went back to his medical school to do research. That's where I am. It took a longer time for me, all right? So many of my professors are gone, all right? He went back to one of his professors who was still alive. And the funny thing that Sinclair Lewis, a nice Protestant gentleman from the Middle West newspaper man, could say was that Aerosmith went back to the medical school where he graduated from to do research with a scientist, and the scientist's name was a Jewish name. In those days, the ones who were research for Jewish. <laughs> All right? <laughs> at any rate, at least that's what Sinclair Lewis thought, all right? Uh, so I've come back, all right, to do that. That's my claim to fame, all right? Now, the others who were younger than me, all right, and uh, I discovered that when I went on active duty in the Navy, they were all in elementary school or in uh, junior high school, all right? But I know that time because I have a son who grew up in that time, all right? Um, so, among my uh, colleagues was uh, um, Andrew D'Onofrio, an Italian-American, uh, who uh, I befriended and lost his name in space uh, because I didn't have it on the chart. <laughs> I, I only remember names when I see them on the chart and after the second visit, all right? <laughs> all right. Okay, number, uh, the other... Uh, significant person was Evelyn Meha uh, from Kamba uh, care manager for community health care, all right? And uh, Cindy Jane Baptiste, Kamba uh, career programmer, uh, manager community health and uh, uh, I'm assuming 11 is uh, Latin American and uh, that Cindy is Haitian and uh, we didn't practice French while I was uh, talking with her <laughs> because her French is much better than mine even though it's Creole, all right? And uh, the last person who showed up in the group was uh, Gracie Han who's a Chinese-American staff worker in uh, downstate, uh, interested in a community African-American health and HIV disparities, 
Okay? So that's the group, all right? And we came up with the following. Um, the uh, My background uh, came up with the ad attitude that the research is the future, all right? Because that's why I came back, all right? And I came back after having been in the Navy for 40 some odd years and recognizing that the corpsmen that I trained 40 years ago were not saving the lives they're saving now, all right? And the lives and the corpsmen that are being saved now, <clears throat> many of them have PTSD, even if they didn't have a, a physical injury, all right? So we have to think in terms of head trauma and PTSD as almost the same thing, just more or less, all right? That's my entree, all right? And uh, Andrew uh, uh, D'Onofrio was uh, uh, particularly interested in organization and attention to the community, and um, Cindy was uh, particularly interested in individual attention in the community, and uh, uh, Evelyn uh, also individual attention. So that's our group, all right? And that's the, the feedback. I remember doing this when I was on active duty in the Navy, uh, so I was not unfamiliar with it, it's just that I got caught <laughs> as, as a leader before I was ready. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, let's give a hand to everyone. So with that, uh, thank you for all of you who have come from various places, uh, from our capital city, Albany, to Downstate, to help us uh, get through this day, and from Mega Evers, from Brooklyn College, from all the colleges uh, and schools at SUNY Downstate. We thank you very much for coming and making this uh, very successful. But more importantly, I think we have to thank Pam. Where is Shamika? Where is she? Where is Shamika? Yeah, she's right there. She's us. All right. So all the announcement and all that stuff, you know, between her and Pam, they were handling the, uh, the communications. Where's Lakia? Lakia is outside. Okay, very good. Um, so thank you all. Now, do you have any other comments to make, Dr. Patu? Again, we'll see you next year, and thank you. <laughs>